Once everything is dry and you've got at least two coats on, pull off the tape. And as you're doing so, you might feel around the side of the neck a bit of a bump, a bit of a ridge where there's lacquer and then there's no lacquer here on the fretboard. If you want to take a, some of the sanding sponge and lightly sand there, you may. If it doesn't bug you, that's fine. But it should come off pretty easy if you want to flatten that out. Okay, there's my bridge. And then the last thing, we'll pull that paper back out of there. Okay. Now we got to put oil on. Now, here's this is just cutting board oil. It's called uh, mineral oil. And guys, find a small rag. Even a paper towel would work, but there's no reason to get a gigantic rag that'll soak up more in the rag than it will actually put on the fretboard. So uh, get a small rag, just tear it with a razor blade or whatever. Get it wet on one end. And go ahead and cover everything with the oil. Remember, this oil will not affect the lacquer in any way. It should wipe right back off. Same as your fingers, a little soap and it comes right off. So this isn't a staining oil like you would finish other furniture with. It should come right off of your fingers if needed. And then of course do the same on the bridge. And if you notice that this ever dries out, you can always put more on later on. It, this stuff goes into the pores and you can continue putting it on. So then take a dry spot of the rag and kind of wipe off what isn't soaking in. Remember this Indian rosewood has very tight pores. It's a very hard wood. So it doesn't soak in a lot. It does enough to do the job. Okay, we can always hit that a little bit later too if uh, more needs to be done. Now after this, finally, we take your nut and flip this around. Now it fits in just fine in the, in the groove that I left. However, as you might be able to see, it's too long, so it sticks out the end just a little bit. And we did that on purpose because I didn't know how thin this is going to be sanded to. So I'm simply going to put it in place and hold it there with my finger while I draw a line and now I know where to sand it off to. You can cut on the bandsaw or you can take it straight to the sander, but we need it to fit so it's flush on both sides. Here's your nut. I set it down to a steel ruler so that we could kind of mark where each of the strings go. Now if you measure, it is a, almost exactly one and three eighths of an inch long. So I'm going to measure in one eighth of an inch and put a little line. I'm going to measure from the other side about an eighth of an inch and put a little line. And what's left, we want to subdivide into four strings. So we have one string here, one string here, and then two in the middle. Measure in one, two, three eighths, right there. And then from the other side, one, two, three eighths, right there. And in between them is three eighths. So they're evenly spaced, three eighths apart so that it gives your fingers as much space as possible to use the strings without going over to another one. Now we need to figure out how deep to cut the little notches for the strings to fit into. I found consistently from one ukulele to another that the width of this nut and the thickness of the fretboard leaves you about a sixteenth of an inch. So how do we measure down a sixteenth? This is where a little bit of guessing comes in handy. Use the edge of your finger along the edge here and hold your pencil. And a sixteenth of an inch is about that much. It's hard to explain. By all means, use a ruler, of course. But use the edge of your finger and draw a straight line across so you know not to cut any deeper than that on the bandsaw. Now remember, you want to cut, I'd rather you cut too shallow than too deep, because I can always cut a little deeper later on as needed with a handsaw. So just take an eraser and take off all those pencil lines. You could even lightly sand them off if you want. And then it doesn't matter if it goes in this way or that way as long as the notches are up. So at this point, we're going to super glue that nut into place. So pop it off. This super glue is a little on the thicker side so it doesn't run quite as much. This is a catalyst, helps it dry faster. I'll show you that in a second. 
but we put a little bit of glue on the end and a little bit at the base. And you try not to put so much that it squeezes out and runs on the side. Now, with a catalyst, first, which way do you want it to go? I'm gonna have it go that way. So I'm gonna spray on this face and this bottom a little bit of this clear liquid. Smells a little bit funny, but it doesn't hurt. It washes off with water, it evaporates like water. But when you put it on, it immediately starts to cure. So you wanna put it on, make sure it's in the right place as quick as possible. Press down and hold for about 10 seconds and at least it'll grab at that point. It'll grab and bond the super glue instantly. All right, now that may need a little more time to actually cure, but not much. This catalyst makes it dry super fast.